Hi everybody. So I wanted to post a little video response to the first sub D challenge of the hand. Thank you for everybody who participated um, and show you how I've been able to work through this. And I'm going to try and do this for all of the challenges that I put up where we let it sit for a little while, let you give it a shot. And then uh, I show at least my solution. Hopefully you guys come up with your own solutions. Um, but the way that I'm going to do this, first of all, I've got my image imported it's already on my layer stack um, and I am going to actually use a polyline and I'm going to start by putting a point of the polyline on each part of the hand so here here and here and I'm going to just lay the palm out with lines there's tons of ways to do this. You could do it with an append face. You could take one face and extrude it. But I like this because it allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff quickly. And if we do a sub D loft, and I want it to have no creases and things like that. And then I'm going to hit tab to switch to display mode. Actually, I wanted the corners. Let me do that again. We're going to go ahead and use sub D loft, run it. I do want the corners, and then I'm going to switch to the box mode or crunchy mode or whichever mode you want to think about. And this lays out essentially the basis of my paper doll. So I'm going to select my curves, and I'm going to just delete them for now because I don't need them. And then I'm going to just use gumball. I'm going to control shift click, click, and I'm going to pick these two and extrude. And the reason that I do that is if I extrude them both at the same time, I get a closed extrusion. If I extrude them one at a time, I get individual extrusions. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I were to pick these two faces and extrude them, see how they extrude, oops, see how they extrude together like that. Whereas if I pick this one and extrude, then this one and extrude, this one and extrude, I get two separate pieces. So that's why I extruded these two fingers separately. So I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to extrude these. Move the point. Move the point. I'm control shift clicking, by the way. I find this is quicker than using sub D filters or, or selection filters. And I'm in shaded mode here, so I'm going to go to wireframe. Shaded mode, if you drag across the face, it picks the face. So now I can go one, two, three, four. Because these are separate, I can extrude these all twice. And then I can just move the points how I want. You may have a different method, but this is how I'm doing it. And if you like that, you're welcome to keep doing it. If you don't, you can do it any way you want. There's a lot of ways to get there. Some modifications. Again, just control shift clicking allows me to quickly pick faces, edges, or verts. And sometimes it can be easier in one mode than another to pick. So say shaded mode is easier to pick faces. Wireframe is definitely easy to pick, easier to pick verts and edges. Picking has been something of, a, of great debate. So we're obviously interested in your thoughts there. But we can very quickly come through here and just lay this out as we want. All right, that's the basis. I might make a few last little minute adjustments in here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go to perspective view. <clears throat> I'm going to just extrude this up a little bit. And it gives me this 
object. And you'll notice that it's got hard edges on it. And I don't want the hard edges, so I'm going to go to my sub Ds. I'm going to remove all the creases. Now I've got a nice soft hand. Now, since I did the gumball extrude, the back is open. And I'm going to fix that by doing this mirror. And then I'm going to join. And it put a crease in because I forgot to change it in the crease dialog, but I'm going to take it out. And now I have a nice soft hand. And that was a really quick way of doing that as opposed to having to try and bridge or try and figure out how to fill the back. Just extrude half of it, mirror, and join. It's all joined up. Opening up the wrist, I'm going to come in here and shift control click the faces in shaded, mo shaded mode. That opens up the wrist. Double click the edge. Extrude, extrude, and I've got a wrist. And now I can start modifying any way I want. One of the things I like to do in sub these is use the bend command because it allows you to do really nice procedural bends on the sub D. It also doesn't rebuild like it does with a poly surface, and it allows you to get some really nice features in here. I'm going to start just pulling some shape into this. Give myself a little palm. Make a few more modifications to the fingers. Use a bend deformer. And start adding my shapes to this. Now, fingernails. The way I did a fingernail, I just control shift clicked. I extruded once, extruded twice, and then I took this edge. And I think I've got my gumball oriented to C plane. I want it from aligned to world. And I'm going to just pull it down and under. these faces. I'm going to pull them together a little bit. I'm going to rotate the gumball by control clicking and rotating. Now if I click control it extrudes, but if I control click I can rem I can modify it. And then I can pull the quick of the nail. Again I'm going to control rotate. It allows me to rotate that. Super useful. And then I can use this little seaplane waffle to pull this over. Grab the front of this. Pull it out a little bit. And then we got a little fingernail. Yeah, it needs, needs a little bit more modification, but you get the drift. So that's how I would put a fingernail on this add some edges in here. And I would probably do this in box mode. I like doing the insert edges in box mode so that you can see exactly what you're doing. And if I needed more wrinkles, I would add a few more edges. And then I can grab this edge and this edge and shift scale. And I get my little finger wrinkles. Now my anatomy professor in college would probably be disgusted with this model, but we can start building from here. Okay, that's how I would get there on this particular model. Obviously a lot more modifications to do from here, but a good foundation nonetheless. Thanks for trying this challenge. I'm going to put up another one here shortly and appreciate all your comments and participations and all that kind of stuff. Thank you.